Everybody's got an opinion. Every Californian and Virginian. It's so hard to tell who to trust and who to ignore. Someone's got to settle the score. Trey and Chelsea will help you choose. Whose views win? Which ones lose? Hi. Hi, Chelsea. Hello. Hello, everyone, all of you listeners. Welcome to Review.Review, the podcast dedicated to reviewing. I'm not going to yes and that. Is that bad? <laughs> Reviews. I don't know what that was. I thought it was Angela at first, and then it changed to like Julie Andrews. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't even know how I got. I don't know why my voice went there, but I followed it. And I remember Angela, RIP. Okay. Anyway. Oh, Angela. Anyway, we're just like Siskel and Ebert, only instead of reviewing cinematic masterpieces, we rate and review those hilarious, scathing, and sometimes suspicious online reviews. That's Chelsea Dawn. And that's Trey Gerald. And together, we are your trusty... The Review Queens. The, it does, I can't set her up thinking what? she's going to change. To say Review Queens. Whatever, who cares? How's your crown today, Tracy? <laughs> oh, Che. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's never going to get old. I, I, I am so obsessed with that. Literally a listener. Ham and cheese. Came up with that. Love you. Anyway, my crown's good. It feels like a mm-hmm. little bit obstructed by I'm wearing headphones for the first time, which is a strange experience for me. Like, I feel like I should. Especially with that top knot. I think that's yeah, adding um, the top knot. Sensation. Pl- like, I, I'm like not sure if the headphones need to go in front of the top knot or behind it. I sort of feel like I'm like recording a song in a booth or doing ADR or something like that. So I'll get used to it. You have a lot on your head today. I do. There's there's a lot happening. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's many things to coordinate. How are you doing? How's your week been, Trey? Good. I'm good. My week's good. Um yeah. Oh wow. How was your week? <laughs> Sounds I'm trying good. To think- Sounds good from all the elaborate details you just gave us. I imagine it was a great week. I don't really know. I don't really have anything interesting. That's fine. Sometimes it's just a week. Sometimes I don't even remember what happened yesterday. And that's okay. I really do notice as I get older, like my short-term memory is less and less. Like I really am sort of like, what even, what even have I been doing? I know. It's sad. But I feel you. What about you? My week was good. You know, I'm still getting used to the puppy, Goldie. Mm-hmm. I had a friend come over last night to meet Goldie, which was really nice. I love this friend so much because she's like just brutally honest in a way that is extremely refreshing. And she's also my friend that I always go to for skincare advice. The under eye circle situation has been really bad. Like, can you give me some info on like what I could possibly do? It feels like puffy and dark and whatever. And she was like, can I be honest with you? And I was like, yeah, of course, please. And she's like, how much water are you drinking? And I was like, not very much. She's like, you're extremely dehydrated. I could tell from like the second that I saw you and there's no eye cream that's going to be able to fix that. You just need to drink some water. And I was like, you're right. And I appreciate that. Well, yeah, because that's really what's going on. And it's not about making a buck. Well, I mean, first of all, she's not getting commission on this. She's just like my, she's like the equivalent of my friend, Steph, who's my doctor friend. Like whenever there's anything medically going wrong with me, my dog, my parents, my sister, like a friend, I'm going to bother Steph. And this friend is the same with skincare. So like she's giving free advice to me on the regular. So I appreciate the honesty, you know? Dehydration is a real thing. It is. And I'm not good at drinking water. And sometimes you need a little slap on the wrist. Well, I'm glad that she slapped your ass. You need to drink your water, Chelsea. It's true. I just realized I don't even have water right now, which is what's wrong with me. Well, I have this like 32 ounce cup with me all. I know you're very good at drinking water. Oh, thank you. That means so yeah. much. <laughs> you are. Well, I'm glad that we're connecting about water. I'm glad that yes, your friend is highlighting the importance. You know, I have to remind my nephew a lot to drink water. Okay. You can add me to the list. Like when you remind your nephew, just, okay. just figure you're, you're probably going to have to remind me too. Uh, should you go get water right now? Pro- I should probably, right? 
No, our listeners are more important. Is there anything? Um, All right. Do you want to <laughs> share anything that's making you very angry? Yeah, I do, actually. Lodge a complaint. I'd like to lodge a complaint against Netflix. And it's not for what you think. I understand. I love Netflix. I spend a lot of time on there. Okay. Netflix is great. Just like, don't come at me. Okay. I love you, Netflix. I like desperately want to be on a show or a movie that's on you. I love you. However, let's just talk about it for a second. When I turn on Netflix, okay, I don't know why. I don't know when this started and I don't know why they did it, but there's this loud, obnoxious sound. Da-da-da! Like, it's like this, like, yours doesn't do that. Dung, dung. Dun, dun. It's like the Netflix yeah. logo sound. It is so obnoxious. It doesn't matter if my TV volume is at like 10 <laughs> or if it's at like 70, no matter what, it is so la- loud every single time it happened. Well, first of all, like, it doesn't happen every time, but there's no way to turn it off. I've looked into this. I've done research and I cannot find any way to turn this off. Every time it happens, it scares me. Now it scares Goldie. It's oh. just like, it's too much. And I get it. Like, I want you to have your little like opening moment sound. I think you deserve that. But like, can we just control the volume, please? That's a great point. I thought you were going to talk about how they auto play their trailers. And that makes me so annoyed. Oh, that too. That's annoying too. And then just like in gen, this is like more of a general thing, like not necessarily just against Netflix, but do you know how, like when you're watching a movie and then like you have it on a nice volume, you're enjoying it. Like it's a good experience. And then all of a sudden like a song comes on or like something happens in the movie and it's like (laughs) so loud, like for no reason. It's just like, I don't know what happened to the sound mixing or if this is like a theatrical to streaming issue, but like it is not consistent and without a doubt like anytime that happens I feel like if I'm like at home with my mom she's like make that lower like it's too loud and or like if I'm with my friends they'll be like it's too loud make the tv lower and it's like I understand I'm not I haven't changed anything you've been watching this movie for the past 45 minutes completely fine with the volume of the movie like I it's not my fault that this, you know, whatever, that the sound mixing was off. That I've noticed that with YouTube, like whenever it goes to an ad, the ad volume is always slightly higher. Yeah, it's Which irritating. just means that like we're being withheld from a certain decibel point so that ads can be louder. Like yeah. I was literally thinking about this two days ago. That's upsetting. Yeah, no, my, my watch has this thing where it like tells me when the decibels are like dangerously yes. high. And every time that Netflix things goes on it comes on i'm just like this isn't right you need to reach out to netflix i'm injuring myself netflix i love you and everything that you do and like let's just fix this so that we can get our relationship back on track okay hilarious i'm sorry you're dealing with that (laughs) thanks trey do you have a complaint you want to lodge yes similar vein here i today i want to lodge a complaint against passwords yes have you noticed how now All of these websites and interfaces, they have demands at you for what your passwords should include. That is so rude. Don't tell me I need a capital letter and a special character. There's only like seven. What is it? I I mean, I guess you could use like a, a one of the end parentheses, but like there's eight special characters humans can choose from. Okay, well, now I'm seeing like maybe you could do brackets or like that weird wiggle thing. Whatever. The point is, is like, it's so obnoxious to me that you're going to dictate that I have to add this crap that I'm never going to remember. Also, like everything has a password now and I have a Mac world. So like I can just do like my fingerprint and like my MacBook Pro will like log me in. So I don't even remember my passwords anymore. Right. And I used to always have the same password. But you can't do that. No, I even have like an interface for work that makes you change your password every two months. Yeah. And th- so I literally just have like in my note, well, here we go. Now everyone can break into my life. But in my notes, <laughs> I have like, I have to write down because it's like every two months I have to change a path. How, what? I, I don't, can't ever remember. It's so obnoxious to me. Don't even get me started when you start to make a password. And now my Apple computer recommends a strong password. Do you know what I'm talking about? 
Yeah. Oh, well, I've been doing that lately. And I don't know if that's a mistake, but I, I just use the strong password. Cause like, then I'm like, it's going to remember my face. It's going to remember the strong password. And then I don't have to like, think about it or like write it down somewhere. What if you're not on your personal device? How will you ever remember that password? I guess I'm screwed. See, I just don't understand. <laughs> I'm just so sick of passwords. My whole life is consumed with passwords. Yeah, the amount of like mental space that the passwords have to take up, there's got to be a better way. It's weird. It's like, I don't want the whole fingerprint and like eye mm. retina thing for everything because a part of that feels sort of sci-fi, yeah. but also a part of it feels necessary because I can't remember this many things. I'm 35. My parents are in their 70s and they can't remember any password. And then I am the child that's trying to help them because I understand there's a learning curve, but it's like, I, I can't help you reset your Apple pass code nine more times. Like at some I point know. we're going to get locked out. I can't even remember my passwords. How am I going to be upset at my 70 year old parents for not knowing that? Anyway, passwords are just too much, too much. Too much. Totally agree. Great complaint, Trey. Thank you. Do you need I to get water? I think I should. I'm going to go get water. BRB. Well, I'll take this opportunity while Chelsea's getting water to tell a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Chelsea's back already. That was really fast. I thought you were going to like, going to go to the kitchen. Oh, no, no, no. I, I like, that's the thing is I have like a little mini fridge in my room. I oh. have my like vitamin water zeros here, which I know is not water, but don't come at me. Okay. This is that is what like, you're drinking right now? Maybe. There's no sugar. It's, it's water. All right. Well, it's your body. <sighs> okay. I'll work on it. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your body. That's not my place. I'll order us some review that review water bottles and I'll get better. <gasps> oh, I would love that. All right. So enough about the water, enough about yes. us complaining. Why don't we True. take a little time to investigate some online written reviews? How do you feel about that, Chels? Mm, I got my magnifying glass ready. Ooh. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to go. As you know, we are your trusty review queens. So each week we bring in a review from the internet that we feel needs to be inspected. We read you the review. We break it down. We rate the impact of the review on our trusty scale of one to five crowns. It's a very regal process that Chelsea, Don, and Trey Gerald like to call. Assess that kvetch. And you all know at this point, kvetch means complaint. Okay, who's first today? Me! Yay, Trey is first. Okay, I can't believe this is episode 11 already. Wow, crazy. Okay, take it away, review queen. Thank you. Review that review. Okay, today I have a review from TripAdvisor, which I'm really into lately. It's just like, there is a plethora there. Anyway. I just think they're very committed on TripAdvisor to their reviews. I think there is something different about... Yes someone on TripAdvisor rather than Yelp. I don't know why. Anyway. Okay. So today my one dot review okay. from TripAdvisor is written by a user named Adventures W Family. Ooh, it's like a whole family that's writing this review. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And this is for the Times Square Walt Disney store. Oh, okay. We've been coming after Times Square a lot. I appreciate that. I actually found this review and then I realized it was for the Times Square. But yeah. Okay. The subject here, worst Disney store. I love writing positive reviews, but have to make exception for this particular Disney store. Mm. The employees are poorly trained. The store is chaotic and the customer service is just awful. The first thing our six-year-old daughter wanted to do after reaching our hotel in New York was visit the Disney store. She loves the Disney store in Chicago and Orlando. And we had mentioned there was one near our hotel in Times Square. This year alone, our family went on a Disney cruise and three months later took a Disney World Vaca. We love our Disney. We have always had such a positive experience and appreciate the level of customer service we typically experience. That is, until visiting the Disney store at Times Square. Tonight, our daughter left the store in tears, and rightfully so. She was struck in the face by an adult man <gasps> at the store. 
no. I could hear and see the impact as she was standing right next to me and holding my hand. Parentheses, it, all caps, had to hurt, in parentheses. I don't doubt it was an accident, but I expected the man to see if she was okay or at least apologize. Instead, he just started to walk away like nothing happened. I leaned down and asked my daughter if she was okay, parentheses, watching her struggle so hard not to cry, mm. end parentheses. And then I stood up and said, hey, you need to be careful. You just hit my daughter in the face really hard. The cast member working upstairs near where we were standing stepped in front of me and said, accidents happen, dot, 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 move on. <sighs> Seriously? My daughter was sobbing, parentheses, BTW. This is a child who does not cry during shots, bike falls, you name it. The cast member, parentheses, you know, the ones who are supposed to be kind and call the little girl's princess, said, move on. I have to think that if I saw this happen to another child, I would be equally disgusted. This cast member should never have been given a job at a store that caters to children. Her tone and body language was that of a bar bouncer, not a Disney employee. In my opinion, the appropriate thing and common sense option would have been to first see if the child was all right and then maybe offer her an ice pack. I told the cast member I would like to speak to the store manager. Oh my God, it's a Karen. Needless to say, the cast member never got the store manager for us. They must have incredible turnover at this location. Both times my husband and I asked where a particular product was located, no employee had a clue. To top off the experience, my husband said the cashier decided not to take his coupon because she didn't know how to enter them. This place is the worst. <laughs> wow. So this review introduces finally here, episode 11. We now have our Karen sound effect. Oh, thank goodness for that. Although I don't know how I feel about Karen. I don't know how I, I don't know. Chelsea? I don't know. How are you feeling? I wonder if this is a non-Karen manager situation. I feel pretty like this is pretty bad. You know, yeah. I feel I feel for Adventures W family. First of all, families that are like very into the whole Disney thing are super into it. So I appreciated that they let us know that this is their jam as a family. They just, they go all, they do the cruises, they, they go to Disney World, they, you know, they are really hitting up all the Disney establishments. So they wanted us to know for sure that they're an authority on this subject. No wonder they had a coupon. Yeah. Also, I would <laughs> love to have a Disney coupon, but yeah, but yes, they're also pointing out like they have a strong, long history of excellent customer service and truly Disney customer service is insane. David and I went to Disney World for our honeymoon. Neither of us are Disney people. It just was like, we didn't want to plan our wedding to begin with. And we didn't want to plan a honeymoon. So like uh, David's really big Disney fanatic did the whole thing for us. Um, oh, nice. So we went for four days. And as newlyweds, they gave us a big old button. And it's like Cinderella's carriage. And every single person who worked for Disney, as soon as they saw the pin, we would be walking by. Congratulations. Yeah. Like it's insane. The customer service. Everyone is so happy and nice. So that's where Adventures W family is coming from. Right. And it was like, not only did we not get top notch. This is child abuse. Service here. But this is child abuse. And then, so the child abuse portion, I'm wondering like, how exactly this went down because I'm sure it was an accident like I don't I don't think that there was just a man in here that was like let me slap this child up the face I'm sure it was an accident so I don't really know the like situation and also I thought it was a little bit strange I was confused for a second because Adventures W spent so much time talking about the staff that work there and then they kept referring mm -hmm. to the slap as happening from a man and so I was confused yeah. for a second I was like is this a man that works there that slapped the child or is this just a man that was shopping yeah I mean even in the beginning of the review they say the store is chaotic right I mean it's Times Square 
Exactly. But I do believe that it was like a customer. I think it was a random customer. Yeah, I'm sure it was a random customer. It's funny when we have these Times Square reviews, it's like we always have to kind of add that to the mix. It's utter and complete chaos. And I'm sure it is a revolving door over there because it's not an easy place to work. I mean, who wants to work as a waiter in Times Square, much less retail? Yeah, retail in Times Square just sounds awful. Wait, but if you were working at the Disney store in Times Square and you were nearby and you saw a child get hit in the face. Also, I do have to point out there's an inconsistency here Mm -hmm. at first. And I understand that like maybe the child started crying later, but Adventures W begins to, to clarify that the child was trying not to cry. Right. And then we kept go back to the child who was sobbing. I get that though. Cause I feel like the child had to process the impact. Yeah. The child was processing. And then like when the mom gets involved and then like all of a sudden this like random cast member is getting involved. I feel like beyond the fact it probably hurt that's overwhelming for a kid. So true. So that wait, tracked for if me. you were the staff person, what would your reaction be? I'm glad you asked. I was thinking about that. It's a strange thing because when, when I first heard like her response and she was like, you need to be more careful. Right. I can imagine that. Let's say I did that and I didn't realize that I did it for some reason. Like, you know, we were reaching for the sweatshirt and I overextended. I don't know if I didn't realize that it had happened. And then like somebody came at me and they were like, you need to be more careful. Like maybe the cast person felt like I need to both retain this customer that accidentally hit this person while also maybe like dealing with this situation. But I feel like they didn't deal with the child at all. Like I think it was, if it was me, I probably would have said, hi, I'm so sorry. Like, it seems like we had some sort of a problem here. Like, are you okay? Like, you know, sir, I imagine, you know, you obviously didn't do this on purpose. I know it's crazy in here today. You know, let me, let me hold your things. Let me help you. Like, I I think I would just do something to try to appease the situation and make everybody happy. I also know that when you're at Disney World or land, like, this is sort of embarrassing. I was like, I don't know, probably like 15. And I went to Disney for spring break with my mom and we went on this alien ride and I was terrified. Like, I don't like any of that stuff where it looks like there's a real alien and it's sticky and it's going to touch me. Oh, I know exactly. Were you locked into the seats and it's yes. in the center in a tube? Oh my God. That yes. was so terrifying. It was ter- they, yeah. they got rid of it. Yeah. It was awful. So like I left and I was hysterically crying and somebody was there immediately and they like gave me a pin and they were like we're so sorry like here's a pin stay and watch the parade and then like two seconds later it was like if you have a pin guess what you're in the parade and it was like this whole thing so it just goes to show especially like even if I was you know a teenager (laughs) embarrassingly enough but you know (laughs) if if there was a a kid that was crying in the Disney universe you would think there's something that they could do or there should be a protocol for like kids crying like give them a I don't know a special Mickey sticker right there's got to be something that we could do yeah I wonder if there is like different expectations for the store obviously I would assume there are but yeah it it does seem to me that the worker went into like keeping a crisis from happening mode the parent was like excuse me excuse me and so the the worker was like let me stop this escalation right rather than sort of being like they even mentioned like you're supposed to call my daughter a princess which that seems sort of problematic but yeah but that is how that is this universe but I, I even think like if I had been working there, I would have been like, oh no, did you get hit in the face? Like Cinderella's stepsisters do to her when she's <laughs> brushing their hair? Like, it's okay. Right. Like you try to like, you like you are working at a Disney store. Like you totally. would think that the response would have been more compassionate to, towards this little child. I completely agree. I mean, I think there's no doubt in my mind that the staff here mismanaged this situation. I I believe Adventures W. I don't think that the cast member handled it appropriately. But like, do you think that this is indicative of Disney stores themselves? Like, would this keep you from going to this Disney store? That's what I was about to say. I mean, I think that that's the hard thing with situations like this. Like, I understand, like, let's, I'm, I got to put myself in the position of a family because I don't have children. But like, let's say I was going to go to this Disney store with my niece and nephews. I'm sure it is 
insane in there. And it's one of those situations where it's like, watch your child because yeah. people are going to be running to get that new, whatever, Pocahontas uh, limited edition something. So yeah, I think that in that regard, I, I might be like, all right, yeah, good to keep in mind that that this is Times Square and the store is probably mayhem. Outside of that, yeah, I don't know that it would stop me from going. Yeah, to me, I feel like the big part of this review is like about this other customer that we don't know anything about. And I recognize that like the response from the store employee like was not ideal. Right. Or appropriate. But I, I think that that's sort of like an an interesting circumstance that occurred under this roof. I don't know that it's indicative of the store. Right. But, I mean, like maybe because it, it is Times Square and it is chaotic, which they say, it, you know. Yeah. But, but also it ends with this point that like two separate employees did not know where things were. Yeah, they didn't know where things were. They didn't know where the manager was. I mean, yeah, I think you can expect to have a subpar customer service experience if you go to this location, I'm sure. I mean, also to not know how to enter the coupon, that is a time when I would be like, look, I am not a Karen, but you need to get your manager. Like, this is a valid coupon. Like, how can right. you not accept it? And it sounds like at that point, they were just like, I want to get out of here. You yeah, know? my baby is crying. Yeah, that's so sad. I, <sighs> I felt so bad for this kid when she was like, just, you know, like my kid doesn't cry when she gets shots or does, like, you know, I think she really wanted us to know that she had a strong kid because some kids, obviously, like you could bump into them a little bit and they'll start hysterically crying. <laughs> So I think it was important for Adventures W family to let us know that like they're a tough brood. Is that the word? Thick skin. They're a thick skin family. Yeah. I don't know. It is, it is hard when we get these, when we get these reviews that are so specific to this one circumstance to like, you know, zoom out and say, would somebody reading this review that was visiting Times Square, would they say, you know, maybe they would, maybe it is influential because there's a Disney store in like every mall. Like maybe if I read this review and I was with my family, I would say, guys, let's skip it. We'll go to the Disney store when we're home. Yeah, I do wonder if it's going to be more expensive because it's in Times Square. Right. But then you have a kid and you're trying to like entertain them. Like it's like, let's just go to the Disney store. Yeah, this is this is a tough this is a tough one for me to to crown. There are so many circumstances like this, too, where it's one employee is getting a terrible review. Right. When you're like, especially with the turnover, like who knows if this employee is even there right now. Right. And I think that that's what's so hard about this is like, you could go in there. Someone, when was this written? 2016. Okay. All, All right. right. I think I'm ready to crown. How about you? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. So Chelsea and I each have our own set of one to five crown cards. And in an effort to be fair and not influenced by one another, we simultaneously reveal our rating cards. <laughs> The queens are tabulating. <laughs> okay, are you ready? All right, I think I'm ready. Total score. Oh, interesting. interesting. I know, I, I have four crowns up. Trey has three crowns up. I think I'm just like a softie when it comes to kids now. Mm -hmm. I just felt bad for this family and their experience. And I wanted, I guess I wanted to validate the experience that they had, even though maybe they were coming in a little bit hot with the like, we are an elite Disney family. And like, we are here to say something. But I did feel like I heard them. And I think I'm just becoming a softie in my tenure as a review queen <laughs> I, I've officially become the Paula I started as like a Simon Randy now I'm the Paula why did you do three so you'll never be able to be a judge on American Juniors if they ever bring that back I guess not that's okay uh, you can't criticize children um, no. okay I said three crowns it just feels middle yeah. to me like I I think that the points raised by Adventures W family are totally valid it does feel a little specific I don't know that the impact is that strong other than when I go into the store, I'm going to have to be a little vigilant, but I think that's just being in a crowded place anywhere, right? especially in Times Square. So I think that it would be a, a distant memory in the back of my mind, but I don't think it would keep me from going to the store. And so for that reason, like, I'm sorry to baby adventures W, but <laughs> I'm sorry you got, you know, hit in the face and I hope that you're okay. I also feel like Adventures W family, just based on like their name alone, I feel like they must write a lot of reviews. And they also said no. they don't. This is, they've only had four contributions. Oh, interesting. Because, because the first sentence was like, 
we love writing. I you know. I know. Love writing positive reviews. Well, maybe they are on Yelp or something, and they didn't maybe. do this. Maybe they only opened a TripAdvisor account to write this review. Maybe. I feel like I gave Adventures W too high a score, but I think that they. It's okay. You don't have to apologize, Paula. Just drink. <laughs> just drink some more water. All right. I think I'm dehydrated. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. All right. Well, let's take a break so that Chelsea can get hydrated and when we come back we'll get into chelsea's review Woo. okay bye bye oh i'm just so thirsty <laughs> hold your crown we'll be right back All right, we're back from that break. And just a little heads up, if you are not a part of our royal court on Patreon, you just missed out on some quality content, honeys. <laughs> but anyway, right now it is game time, Chels. It's time to take a quick spin on the Merrill Go Round. I don't feel like an icon. Most of the days I feel like I can't. That's with an A. Okay, here's the deal. Trey and I have each picked a rotten, scathing, pithy one-star zinger. And with 30 seconds on the clock, we'll take turns trying to recite the zinger in as many genres as possible. Just like Queen Meryl, who does it all. Before the clock runs out. All right, Trey had the first review, so I got the first zinger. What is it, girl? Tell us, tell us. All right, we're all dying to know. So I feel like all my zinger, a lot of my zingers, or this is the second one that's come from GNC because I spend a little time <laughs> on that website. I'm also bad at taking vitamins. So I was looking for like a gummy vitamin version of this thing called resveratrol. It's an age revitalizing fruit chew. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody told me that it was supposed to be good for my skin. <laughs> but now I know I just <laughs> need to drink water. So you're so worried about your skin save that money. Anyway, this review is from Patty P. It is a one-star review for these revitalizing fruit chews on GNC. And it says, taste crappy. Not tastes, taste singular, taste Woo. crappy. Oh, Patty P. That's such a great oh, name. Oh, Patty P. Taste crappy. All right. I am ready. What am I strapped into today, Trey? Today you are on a black beauty horse. Oh my God. Nay. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. Did you brush the horse's mane? Of course. Always. You have to make sure. Otherwise you don't want that mane to get matted. You no know sudden I mean? movements or it'll get scared. It's true. Three, two, one. Go! WWE. Chase Crappy. Spy. Chase Crappy. Superhero. Taste crappy. TLC reality show. Taste crappy. Opera diva. Taste crappy. Auctioneer. Taste crappy. Magic show. Taste Three, crappy. Two, Breaking one. news. Okay. That's all. That was a lot, but that was a short one. Um, okay. So you got six seven wow seven really that, good that might be a personal best no you got eight the other day oh i did oh. i don't i but maybe that was when we didn't include it maybe oh well whatever either way i'm, I'm proud of with you. my score of seven thank you trey and um what is your one star zinger where is it from <laughs> Okay, so my one star zinger today is from Apple Podcasts. It's for a podcast called Call Me Daddy. Okay. So the subject is wow, one star, maybe the worst on air talent I've ever heard. Try. This is a long one. You really gave yourself quite a challenge. I know, but it is just one sentence. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Three, two, one, go. Slapstick. Might be the worst on air talent I've ever heard. True crime, Doc. Maybe the worst on air talent I've ever heard. Auctioneer. Might be the worst on air talent I've ever heard. Sports announcer. Maybe the worst on air talent I've ever heard. Breaking news. 
maybe the worst on air talent I've ever heard. Lifetime. Maybe the worst on air talent I've ever heard. Pop star. Oh. That's all. Wow, Trey. That was great. Four, five, six. <gasps> that means Chelsea's our winner. Yes. Thank you. Oh, wait. I know why I didn't win because I never found out what I was writing. Oh, well, I was riding. I just assumed it was like, I'm riding the black horse. You're riding the white horse. <gasps> sort of like a black swan, white swan moment. Oh, that means you're evil. Yes. That's why I won because I used sorcery. Review that review. So we're back from the game break and now it's Chelsea's turn. Girlfriend, where's yes. your review from this week? Okay, so my review is from Amazon and it is written by Anita J. And it is a one-star review of Coastal Pet Safari. It's a dog dematting comb. Did look this up for personal use in case that's interesting to anybody. All right, here we go. This is Anita J. The subject is we normally don't write reviews and I would love to give this one, but due to dot, dot, dot. We normally don't write reviews and I would love to give this a good one, but due to being left-handed, we cannot. <laughs> the instruction clearly states that if you're left-handed to remove the bolt on the top, and flip the blades. Easy, right? Wrong. What they lack to mention is that you need the assistance of the United States military to remove the bolt. We used every tool we have in our arsenal to attempt to remove the it, and it is impossible to remove. We even stripped the bolt due to the amount of force used to try and remove it. If you're left-handed and are even thinking about purchasing this, please purchase a gym membership first or get the assistance of two bodybuilders to assist you, one to hold the handle and one to turn the bolt. Shame, we so wanted to try this. If the makers of this tool is reading this, please give the option for left-handed folks as attempting to flip the blades is absolutely Dangerous. I almost slipped a few times. What? What? Safari Pet Products, please tell us what we are doing wrong to flip it. Anita J. Anita J came to play. <laughs> I wonder if Anita J got to like apply for that college scholarship for left handed students. Is that a thing? Yeah. So I was so jealous. Oh my God. I didn't know that. I guess that's my right hand privilege. <laughs> it's true. I was thinking about that a lot. Like truth be told, I bought this product immediately afterwards because <laughs> I was like, I'm right handed. I'm right handed, baby. Sorry. You know, my mom was ambidextrous and her teacher would hit her hand with a ruler whenever she yes. would start to use her left. That's so crazy. I Yeah. My grandmother had the same thing. She was ambidextrous, but they like made her right with her right hand. I wish I was ambidextrous, but I know that sounds nice. Okay. I need a J, you know, I'm just curious. Like, can it really be this difficult? I don't know. I like, maybe, I mean, Anita J says you need two bodybuilders, <laughs> one to hold the damn thing. And the other one to turn the bolt. I mean, to me, that just means that it's not, it seems like Anita J bought this product and somewhere within the question, someone was like, I'm left-handed. What do I do? And someone must responded, or maybe they wrote in the thing. I didn't see it, that this is what you do. And it must just not be possible. Wait, I'm confused. Is it a glove? No, it's a comb. It's a, I didn't know that there was left and right handed comb again, right-handed privilege. Sorry. But like, I didn't know that there was a left comb and a right comb. I didn't either. I guess there is. I guess I don't know. I, okay, this whole time you were reading, I was <laughs> picturing one of those gloves that you see like on infomercials where it's like a glove. And I was like, oh, you just have to like flip to the other side of the glove. But no. wait, so I okay, know. it's a comb. It's and, a comb. Oh, and, oh, I guess that if you're coming at it from your left hand, the stroking is different, which is why you would have to switch the direction of the blades. Because if you're brushing with your right, I mean, I'm glad you understand that. I think I'm still confused. I'm dropping a screenshot into the, into the chat, Trey, so that you can see. And then we'll have you... to put it on our Instagram. Yeah, it's what? yeah, it's, a, it's a comb. 
Oh, uh, but you see how, but that is what I was, at the top. yeah, but you see how it's like the, the blades are on the top. Yeah. It's like a, a flag. So only right. one side of the flag has the blades like positioned to actually demat. Right. So I see if you were, if you were left-handed, that makes sense. Then yeah, if you, you were left-handed, have to hold it the upside flag down. would be in the wrong direction. Okay. Right. Okay. And I do see that in the picture, it does kind of make it look like you could just like unscrew the top. Like there's like a little screw on the top. Yeah. Like the little bolt at the end. Yeah. The little bolt I'm, at the end. Wait, I'm just saying that this product is 1249. Can yeah. you just find a left-hand friendly version instead of like trying to make this one work? I guess again, that is like, again, privilege, but. I think it's our right-hand privilege. I wonder how, if you're listening listeners and and you're left-handed I'm genuinely curious how many times you find a product that is not suited towards you me too please please call us yeah are there a plethora of left-handed products out there like I don't think if I were a manufacturer and I was manufacturing this comb maybe I wouldn't think about that I don't know it wouldn't have even occurred to me yeah which again Yeah, this is interesting because I think that if I were left-handed and I read this review, this would be like very useful to me. And I would be like, oh, I'm not going to buy it because I would be used to this. Well, even the headline is like, I wish I could give this a review, but I can't because of who I am. And that is horrifying. (laughs) I mean, that's horrifying. Yeah, that's sad. It's true. It's sad when you think about it that way. Like, I'm sorry, Anita J. I think this is incredibly valuable. If I was left-handed, yeah. I mean, even for you as a right-hander, you're like, great. It doesn't affect me. Right. Like it is seeping with value. Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to looking right now, 93 people found this helpful. So that says something. And there's no like response. There's no response. Um, it's pretty, that's a pretty damning review. It is. If I was Safari, I would be very upset about this. Yeah. I try. I would send them a lifetime supply. Yeah. Of bodybuilders to help them switch the boat. <laughs> right. Blade. Maybe that's what Anita J was going for. And if she was, I respect it. Amen. No shame mm-hmm. in your game. So yeah. I noticed a couple of times there were some spelling mistakes. Yeah. There were definitely some like copy editing issues, you know, misused words, things like that. That just words definitely- left out. <laughs> Yeah, like words left out, like the wrong word and whatever. I definitely believe, I believe Anita in this. Like, I don't think that they're being shady or that they're lying or that they're a competitor. Like, I actually believe that this is a real experience. Yeah, I believe Anita too. I also believe that Anita was serving us hyperbolic comedy here. And for that, I want to just give her a nod, you know? It was funny. I I mean, I like laughed at the bodybuilder stuff and like the get a gym membership, you know, I thought yeah, it was I, sort of I, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't like the first joke about needing to be in the U.S. military or whatever. I oh, well, think- no, no, she said you need the assistance of the United States military. Yeah, I, I think that could have been funnier, but I liked the bodybuilder <laughs> visuals. Maybe she should have workshopped the jokes. But I appreciate that while being discriminated against, she's still has a sense of humor. Anita is able to like try to spin some jokes. So yeah. Okay. That's that's cool. what I, I was getting at. I mean, I wouldn't hang this on my fridge if this was my grandchild because it makes me feel like they're being discriminated against. True. That makes me feel sad. But it's good that they're standing up for themselves. I think so. I think Anita J is really standing up for the left-handed dog groomers of America. If you are a left-handed dog <laughs> groomer and you're listening to this, will you please leave us a voicemail? I'm so good. Honestly, like Chelsea's request earlier, if you are left-handed or if you know someone who is, please have them leave us a voicemail about like commonplace left-hand discrimination because it never occurs to me. Yeah. And I feel like I'm going to have to crown it as if I were left-handed, you know? Ooh, interesting. Okay. Well, let's crown it because I want to have that okay. conversation. Are you sure. ready? Yes. The queens are tabulating. Okay. All right. I'm picking. Okay. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready too. Total score. Okay. Queens are unanimous. unanimous. We're both giving four crowns to Anita. Trey, tell us why you gave Anita J four crowns. <sighs> it's really challenging for me because I didn't want to be coming from a place of privilege on this conversation. Yes. But I am. So I'm just going to mm-hmm. honor the fact that I have right hand privilege. And I gave it four crowns because I think it's a pretty excellent point. And I just didn't give it five because it kind of upsets me. Okay. 
like I actually feel badly for Anita J that they were discriminated <laughs> against. So yeah. And that's like maybe like impacting, like maybe you're not even remembering why you went to Amazon now because you're just kind of well, upset. I just think that like there needs to be a higher level of entertainment in order to be five crowns in my assessment. So totally. to me, I just gave four because I think this is a valid problem, but I don't know the percentage of Amer of people in the world that are left-handed. So I do think that it doesn't matter to certain population. So four crowns. What about you? I gave the four crowns. I took off a crown for the spelling and grammar and the copy editing. I also took off part of that, you know, lack of the, the five crowns was, yeah, the entertainment. I wasn't like bowled over like I was for that giant ball, ball review that had me that was bowling people over stitches. So I wasn't in stitches, but I did appreciate the effort and the ability for Anita to, in a way, through her humor, make light of something that seemed like pretty traumatic for her. And I want to say maybe even triggering. So mm -hmm. because of that, and because if I were left-handed and I read this, I would be like, oh, I'm really glad I know I, I should search elsewhere. I think it was a really, you know, uh, effective review from Anita with lots of respect for you and all of the times you struggle because you're a left-handed person, I'm going to award you four crowns. Excellent. Yeah. All right, my queens, we've reached the most regal portion of our show. Who are you inducting, Trey, for... My Royal Highness. Okay, so today... Yes. I am going to induct a thing once again, but I found the inventor. So... Today, my Royal Highness is something that I think is very frequently overlooked, mm -hmm. not acknowledged, and not thanked and valued. Today, I am inducting ICE. ICE. I-C-E. ICE. Okay. So I was raised in the South as a Southerner, and there is nothing better than iced sweet tea. Mm -hmm. Now, I am married to a Yankee who was raised in New Jersey. And I have learned many things in this pairing, but one of the first things I noticed is that there is a different relationship to ice and to iced drinks. Yes. I also am obsessed with coffee. I love an iced coffee. So I am inducting ice as my Royal Highness because I feel like no one stops to like value this natural thing that lowers the temperature, especially in the summer. Like this is so fabulous. And a man named Frederick Tudor in the early 1800s is the person that was named the ice king. I love how much research you did for this. I just want to give you a nod. Because I know it's a very silly thing to induct, but I actually <laughs> like, I have to have ice. I can't consume any, any beverage if it doesn't have ice in it. I, I mean, I guess like maybe a glass of wine, but I like things cold. Like imagine having champagne that was hot. Terrible. Horrifying. And Horrifying. you know, ref refrigerators are an updated version of an ice box. True. So Frederick Tudor, you are my inductee for my Royal Highness. I hope you didn't do anything problematic. But I really appreciate <laughs> that you did create ice because it is something that truly makes my life better every day. Everyone lift up, except for Chelsea, because she's dehydrated. Lift up your glass of iced beverage right now and we'll do a cheers. Just to you, Frederick Tudor. Frederick Tudor, ice, ice, baby. I mean, thank you. Thank you for that wonderful induction, Trey. Thank you. Now, Chelsea. Who are you inducting for my Royal Highness today? That's a good question. So today I am inducting Jessica Yellen. She is at Jessica Yellen on Instagram. For those of you that don't know, now you know. Jessica Yellen, she's a former um, CNN chief White House correspondent, and she does something called News Not Noise. And mm. she is amazing. She gives you all the information. I mean, listen, everybody gets news from different sources. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak for everyone. I'll speak for myself. She gives me the news that I want to know in a concise way that is interesting and effective. And she just pivoted to this Instagram news angel. And so many people like myself benefit from the things that she teaches us in, in such a pedestrian way. I feel like she allows me to understand things that I might not understand otherwise. And Jessica Yellen, you're a news queen. 
you're my royal highness. And if you guys don't follow her and you're interested in that kind of thing, check her out at Jessica Yellen. Beautiful. I love this. Yes, what? me too. Wait, I don't think I said the word this correctly. <laughs> like, I think my, my tooth got stuck on my lip. Okay. I love this. Ah, uh, I love this too. This is great. This is my favorite part of the show. <gasps> Listener <gasps> voicemail. You guys, we're not done yet. We have a very special edition of Listener Voicemail. I'm just going to start playing it. Okay. Hey, Queens. My name is David, and I would like to lodge a complaint. So this is my husband. Oh, this is this is David. David. Okay. So I just had to, like, be transparent about that. So. Okay. So my complaint that is being lodged is against rental car companies that take your reservation online, give you a confirmation number, say, we're all set, here's your reservation and your confirmation number, and then you arrive there, and they don't have a car for mm-hmm. you, and they just tell you, sorry, we don't have enough cars. We're not honoring your reservation. This happened to me, and it was honestly infuriating because, you know, what happened after I made my reservation and got my confirmation number, I stopped looking for other Mm -hmm. rental cars or any way to get where I was going. I just thought, I have my thing. I'm good. I'm set. Crazy. That's out of control. Have you ever heard of this happening? I wonder if he arrived late or something. I mean, either way, it's disgusting, but I haven't really heard of this happening. It might be a it might be a pandemic situation. I'm not Maybe. sure about that, but okay, we'll keep going. Still. They don't have a car and now I'm scrambling. I have my luggage <sighs> and there's no cars and so what I ended up doing is finding a stranger who was going the same way that I was and she drove me 4 hours Stop. in her car and I actually would like to induct her to be my royal highness because oh. it was, she was amazing. We had a great trip. She also picked up another stray who <laughs> couldn't get her car from the rental company. Oh so God. the story kind of has a happy ending, but this is my big complaint. It's okay if you don't have enough cars. I know people are traveling again now more than they were during COVID. And so if you have a rental car shortage, that's fine. But don't take my reservation. Know okay. your inventory. Have your system figured out. So when I try to make a reservation, it'll say, sorry, we can't give you a reservation. We don't have enough cars. So that I can then look for other ways to get there. And I won't just be kind of feeling screwed over in the moment. That's my complaint. Thank you, Queen. Wow. <laughs> I'm you just... hearing you, David. First of all, I was really scared when he said he took a ride from a random stranger. Thank you for saying that because I listen to <laughs> too many murder podcasts. Yeah. I would never do never. that. Are you no. kidding me? Did we learn nothing from the 70s other yeah. than you do not hitchhike? Agreed. So I'm so glad that it turned out well and that this person ended up being a good Samaritan and a queen. But I was, yeah, I was a little bit nervous for David when he told me that. But like beyond that, which is like, I understand desperate times, I guess, but like ridiculous. How could they do that? You don't give someone a confirmation number if you can't deliver. Yeah. And this was apparently happening to a lot of people that they just like, they picked up another stray. I love how he said that stray. That is very funny. Yeah. Yeah. I, you would think they would have a list of an inventory and you would know not to give a reservation. Who knows? Yeah. David, we're hearing you. So sorry that happened to you. I appreciate that you made a Royal Highness out of a lodging of a complaint that says so much about who you yes. are. Thank you for leaving us a voice. And also just like quick shout out since we're here. And like, I I've thought about giving David my Royal Highness a few times and maybe I still will. But if you've seen any of our beautiful photos on Instagram, Instagram or elsewhere, just know that David is responsible for that. He's a fantastic photographer and we love, I mean, obviously Trey loves him, but I love him too. Aww. Yes. yes. Very nice. This is not an ad, but <laughs> he is a wedding photographer and you can follow him at David Perlman, P-E-R-L photography. Yes. As um, you should. And I did not I did not solicit that complaint. He wanted to give the complaint. So yes, everybody, please give us your complaints. I would, I would love to hear them. And the left-hand people, please. Please let us. And also just, yeah, just, I'm so glad that you said that because I just realized that there was like a gaping thing that I forgot to mention about Angela and I can't, or sorry, not Angela. And what is wrong with me? I can't get anybody's You're dehydrated. I'm dehydrated. Let me drink. But I wanted to say something else about Anita J that made her like kind of a queen. Did you notice that she used the royal we throughout her entire review? What is that linguistic? Not linguistics. That's like um, what's the what's that word? Um, what? It's like the power of persuasion, or or or, or, or it's a Barbara Corcoran quote: "Perception creates reality." 
Yeah. So like maybe maybe I think that I think of Anita as a queen because she she just showed up with that royal we. You're gonna get me on your side if you say we. <laughs> then I think it's me. Yes. That's power. I, that that's, is power. That's queendom. Yes, that's queendom. Anita J. All right. <laughs> well, we did it, my queen. Another round on the R U and R Q Ferris wheel. Wow. We just keep coming up with new nicknames for things. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you like what you heard, please tell a friend. If you didn't like what you heard, please tell an enemy. If you want to be like David, hit up our voice mailbox. It's one eight five zero review zero. You can read us a review or you can lodge a complaint or you can induct someone for your Royal Highness. Yes. You could also follow us on all the socials at the review Queens. And I'm at Chelsea BD, Chelsea with a Y. And I'm Trey with two R. What? I, <laughs> The way you said that, I wanted to sing Chelsea with a B, but B, 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 yeah, B goes Y. But no, what is that song? Liza? Is it like Liza with the... Liza with a Z, but yeah. not Lisa with an... I can't believe I didn't know that <laughs> and you just corrected me. Okay. And I'm at Trey Gerald. That's with two R's. It's a, ba- it's a long story. <laughs> Become a member of the Royal Court by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash review that review. We have three levels, depending on the depth of your pockets, queens. Our entry level starts at only $5 a month. That's true. That's like the price of one coffee at Starbucks, right? I don't know. Okay. Could be ice. <laughs> it should be ice. Let's be honest. Especially in no, this. Those are like $6. Especially in the summer. All right. You can also watch live clips from our recording sessions on YouTube. And remember. Ignore the haters. You're a queen. Gender non-specific queen. Of course. Bye. Bye. Review That Review is an independent podcast. Certain names have been redacted or changed to protect the guilty. Executive produced by Trey Gerald and Chelsea Don with editing and sound design by me with Voice of Her Talents by Eva Kamensky. Our cover art was designed by Logo Vora and our theme song was written by Joe Kanozian and sung by Natalie Weiss. Oh my God, it's a Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea, drink your water. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs>